Hello! Welcome everybody. It's half past six on a Wednesday night. That means we're live from Wild Ginger Running YouTube channel and tonight I have a very, very special guest. I would like to introduce to you Joss Naylor, a fell running legend, all the way from Cumbria at his home in Gosforth. And um, also his friend here today as well, Toddy, um, and we'll get more on that in just a moment. So um, let's start with a big hello to you, Joss. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. Hi. This bit of sun shines out this last two or three days, it's uh, warmed the thing up and all the late flowers that come out, the hedgerows are the most colouring I've ever seen. They're absolutely beautiful around here. Oh, that's lovely. And you guys have been out recently, haven't you? Um, you just did the arm at the weekend, is that right? You're still going strong? I on uh, Sunday, we did the short course. It was 40 years since I last did the uh, home. I think it was it had a different name altogether, I think, in them days. But, oh, uh, yeah, the Kim. After 40 years, and just do, do the short calls. Fantastic. So how did it go? Did you have any arguments between you? Because you are best friends, aren't you? <laughs> we, we didn't fall out at all, really. <laughs> lost a couple of times. Just a couple of times we got lost. <laughs> uh, it's, it's not a it's not a two day marathon, is it? If you don't get lost. Yeah. <laughs> so who did most of the map reading then? Uh, I, I did most of the map reading. Who's the map reader? Yeah. <laughs> um. So we'll just um just talk a little bit about you, Taddy. So how did you get to know Joss? Right. So I uh, I worked at the nuclear power plant down in Sellafield, um, and Joss was on the same shift rotor as myself so and I already started running doubling and running by then um, about 35 years ago now and because once once you meet Josh it's a case of right Tori you can come out with me eh? and you think me go out with Josh Dale eh? go on there I'll give it a go and that's that's I thought that's how friendship started it just started to run and really and then we just used to go out, I used to come down to Wasdale and after work and things like that, we used to go out in the fells, didn't we? I knew that part of your idea was that GMC. The Just Nailer Challenge, yeah, we, we, we put that Just Nailer Challenge together and um, we, just had a, we just had fun right out in the fells. We, we did, a, I did a couple of charity runs with Joss um, for leukemia research. We did a little, um, for multiple cirrhosis as well when he was 60. Uh, and just Generally, Claire, I just become one of his best friends, and now, now my job is running social media, um, because we've got a book, got a publication coming out later in the year. And so I run his social media. I'm also looking after all his memorabilia and trying to put it all in order, make sure it's all there for future use, and filling bits in that just been filled in for us. And really, because history, it's fell in history. This guy is what you say is a legend, yeah. And if you don't watch it, we lose them stories and we just lose what it's all about and what Feldrun is about and you can't let that happen. Yeah, definitely agree with you there. Um, and just to, um, just to, if anybody doesn't know who Joss Naylor is, I just want to read a few of, of your achievements out, Joss. Um, uh, so you were born um, in Wasdale Head, as a lot of people will know, and you were a farmer for many, many years. Um, and during that time, you you've just done so many amazing runs in the Lake District. So um, just to read just a few out. So in the 1970s, you did 61 peaks um, in under 24 hours. Then you bodged it up to 63 peaks in um, 72. Um, and then you got the record in 1975, which was 72 peaks. Um, so that record stood until the late 80s. Um, a lot of your records have stood until um, the late 80s um, or even longer such as the one that you're going to write the book about which we'll come to in a moment so you've done the three peaks challenge uh, Welsh 3000ers you had the Pennine Way record until um, 1989 um, there's uh, Wainwright Coast to Coast Lakes Mears and Waters which we'll talk about more later and the Wainwrights obviously before Steve Birkenshaw broke it um, and then really impressively I think um, even more impressive is running 60 Lakeland fell tops um, aged 60 
and then 70 at 70. So I'm sure I asked you a while ago if you were going to do 80 at 80, um, but I think you you said you weren't going to do that. Is that right? I didn't do my 80 at 80. I did a run from uh, the churchyard at Colbeck where my father was interred to uh, Greendale where he retired and where I retired to in the Lake District. It was just a lovely day out, and it was one of those days that'll stick in your mind forever. Like you know, it was just good turn out of people, and just a lovely day with it. Ah, oh, and so that sounds like a really, really great day on the fells. And I know you've had a lot of great day on, days on the fells. But can you do you have one achievement that's really, really close to your heart that you're like the most proudest of? Um, can you even pick one? I think the one that really stuck out in my mind was. The run up and down Scorfell Pike. Uh, I was going to meet these uh, four young officers from Germany at the wooden bridge at Brackenlaws at two o'clock in the afternoon, and I went up there at two o'clock to go up Scorfell Pike with them. And uh, they'd gone; they'd been gone an hour, and I thought, well, this is a good chance, you know, to see what time I'm going down Scorfell Pike in. And anyways. My friend John Sutherland turned us up from the wooden bridge below Bracken Close. And I had a cracking run up, I ran up by the river, which isn't, a, you know, there isn't really a path there from way across at the bottom of the uh, brown tone till you get to the bottom of little brown tone. And I jumped the river there, and the little legs just took off. I ran straight up a little brown tone to the end of what you call the sour ground, and I couldn't back it on a 45 degree angle, and I come out on the Main crag on the top of Scorfell skyline. I sprinted back across the cairn. Just before I got to the cairn, I passed the four boys who had set up an hour ahead. <laughs> I, just, I got to where that big heap of stones is, about uh, maybe 100 metres from the summit. I turned off the right there, and just then the helicopter came, spinning around above my head. And the cameraman was sitting with his feet out, and the old commanding officer who was in charge of the four, four boys. And he said, hell's bells, I've never seen anything like that in my life. <laughs> so I went down to the bottom, and then I dropped in, and there's a bit of green, craggy ground that runs down to the top of Bayer Scale. I shot down there, and then right down the top of Lingmell, down the end of Lingmell, back to the wooden bridge. And uh, I said to John Sutherland, I said, what time have I done? And he said, 47 minutes. Well, I never thought any more about 47 minutes till, or uh, just quite a few years after the fight race, for the championship race, and also uh, the team over from uh, Italy. And one of the Italian runners did 50 minutes. And I thought after that, my time at 47 minutes wasn't a bad time. It's all right. <laughs> that odd one, I think got down to 50 minutes since, but you know, you've got to have the legs to climb and come back down, and that day was the day I just flicked. Yes, yeah, and... It was six hours in my mind, because there's so many people going there, up and down there, and you think, I, how long has it taken them? And some of them, it takes five, six hours. Yeah. And it, all, some of them went up in 47 minutes. <laughs> like, well, that's impossible. <laughs> it is incredible and um, am I also right in thinking that you didn't particularly train for any of this? You know, not like people would train today with a training plan and everything. Training went into that one, you know, odd time when your legs are right and you are right and the day was right. It was just a bit of high cloud, you know, towards Henry's Hill High Town and just a lovely day for running. Just a little bit of a breeze but not what you call windy. Yeah. Just real conditions. It was dry underfoot and everything right. Yeah. Uh, it sounds amazing. And so for people who aren't familiar with you and, and all your amazing runs, um, could you just give us a little bit of the background? How did you even start fell running in the first place? Well, the first race ever I ran was at the mountain trial in 1960. And uh, I had no intention of running. I was just having my breakfast in the middle of the road. Wilson Farrer who uh, was the proprietor of the Wastel Ed Hotel at that time. A good, good chap was Wilson. And Harry Griffin, you know, you've heard of Harry Griffin, his road books on the uh, fell tigers and all sorts of things. 
Uh, and he, he was the secretary of the uh, late district. I don't know what, what name it had then, you know, but it was the one that put the mountain file on then. And uh, he asked Wilson if there's anybody in you that would probably run the mountain file. And Wilson said, well, Josh might have a go. And that morning he come round and I was having my breakfast and he said, would I like to run the mountain trial? And I said, well, I haven't got any shoes, I haven't got any shorts, I've got no. And uh, I said, I'll have a run anyway, it's like, so. I uh, just had my big strong farm boots on and I put the legs off my clothes and I started off with them. And I, I was running quite well, like I was with the two ladies at the top of uh, Butter. The next one checkpoint was Robinson's Cairn. And uh, just as I got to Robinson's Cairn, and George Rhodes, I think he was in just in front of us there. But I knew a good road through Lingy Crags, and I shot in down the forest, and I crossed the river, and I was trailing through underneath the uh, forest trees, because I had never been thinned out in any case. I got to the wire, and just as I threw my leg over the wire, I got cramped. So I sat down there for about 10 minutes, and then I, this two runners come like, you know, so the good lead then, but I had cramp and anyways, I just fought on with cramp. And the next checkpoint from Black Sailors is Robinson's Cairn, no, Westman Cairn, up on the top of Gable. And then from there to the White Bridge, just at the end of the town. When I got to the end of the town at uh, Stayed, there was two old ladies having their picnic and there is salt cellar and I said could I have some of the salt so I got half of the salt and put it down my throat and made a couple of mouthfuls of water out of the back and I got rid of my cramp and I trotted away after that I think next check round was top of the and top of Ling Mel and then back into what's what Rodell. But I was a bit bit stiff leg next day like you know <laughs> Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> Did you put your legs in a back? You you often like put your legs in the river, don't you, afterwards? I well, when I was down at Bowdoin, there was a good pool, you know, when you come up the path to the Eiffel Gate there, and you could just wade in and sit down, and, you know, you'd just be a head looking out. And yeah. You'd yeah. check and then go and take a few wet things off and have it dry off, and that was it. Yeah. That was a good Yeah, it's good for the recovery of the legs, isn't it, that? And so... A lot, like, you know, it's all you need, really. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, so, so how old were you? Like, you had never run before that day, had you? Or did you just generally run after the sheep and things like that? Um, how uh, old were you when the, all this was happening? I had a, a few runs, uh, a few, like, four, four to five years earlier than that, and I had a, I had a bad accident, like... Uh, I had about eight months when I was running really, really well, but I wasn't completing anything. And I uh, jumped this way a fence and the hand slipped off the Ooh. top of the horse was wet. And I landed on a little stone looking out the ground, just like a spike. Mm -hmm. And it went up the spine where I'd been operated on. Ow. And straight jacket right way down in Manchester. And then when I got put out, I'd, I didn't get any figure or anything. This consultant in Manchester said, give us a note and said, give that to your doctor. And he said, he'll arrange some physiotherapy for you. But he just rubbed in his hand, threw it in the bin and wrote us a note that I was fit to work. And at the last time he told us to get my socks on, you know, I was just yeah. straight up, put in a straight jacket. Ouch. Uh, it took a few weeks, you know, to get loosened up and get to going again, like, you know. Yeah, because you have, you're well known for running through extreme pain and running for a long time in really hard conditions like weather wise and heat wise um, but you you also you run for many years with it with with this back problem didn't you so does that change your relationship with pain do you think if you're just constantly in pain with your back well before you know before I got operated on really you know in the early days there was no operations you know it was just sort of when the 50s come in and they even then they weren't very keen on operating on spines, like, you know. Uh -huh. I don't think they are to this day, like, you know, I think that they only do it if the really, really is necessary. Yeah. You know. And so um, I just want to read out some nice comments from people who are fans of yours and who are listening tonight, just to give you a sense of who's here. Um, so. 
I'm just going to read out some of the live um, the live people who are chatting to us tonight. So if you want us to say something to Joss, then write something right now in the live chat and I'll be reading it out. There is a bit of a delay um, from YouTube to this program that I use here. So if I don't see your comment immediately, I'll read it out in just a tick. So just definitely write something to Joss here tonight. If you've got any questions as well, then please do ask them. So Joss, we've got Hannah Baisley watching. She says proper legend tonight. So she is um, really happy to see you here tonight um we've got uh adrian orange he says ready and raring for this one i've met joss several times and he is a top bloke then we've got arlene m she says hello from maryland in the usa so we've got international um audience tonight um then we've got uh, fiona and mark from derbyshire um, they hope that you're well. They want to ask you a question too. They said, what is your favourite fell to walk up? No, that, that's rather a good one, really. <laughs> I think one of my favourite fells, and I think it was more or less, we lived in the Grandale, and I, I adopted middle fell. It was just so nice to have a trot of a night with the dogs, you know, up, up the blaze around back of the town and come back over middle fell. It was so nice and grassy and easy on the legs and, you know, off the top of Middle Fell, you get a good panorama of not all of the lake you see, but you look across the Con Coniston Fells, Langle Fells, and more or less, you know, right round, and it's just a lovely little fell, you know, and it's become very, very popular, you know. Yeah, there's it's, a fell race up there as well, isn't there? I did that one year. Fell race a lot of years, really. It, uh, Starts down in the village at the strands in Wasler, comes to the valley bottom. Yeah. And then round the back of the and up on the top. Yeah, it's really hard because it's basically just up and then just down. <laughs> it's just like a typical short fell race. Uh, it uh, makes you stick in, like. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, am I right in thinking that Middle Fell is behind your the house where you grew up, uh, the farm, Middle Row? Okay. Swell retired, and it was it's same at Bowderdale. Grandale was one side of it where I retired to, and where I farmed for 37 years. I looked at Middlefell every morning, at least all day, because it was just just behind the farm, more or less. I'm just showing people a picture of that as well, and I'm just showing them a picture of you um, at the farm as well with your arm over a stable door it looks like um on a nice stone building um so that's really good for people to see um where you're from there i i once had a, a chap come to see us from america and it it it, it, it had flown into eighth row somewhere and he had a pushback and he come to see us wow he said, i don't believe that such a bloke exists and that day I've been shaving sheep and I just finished one lot in the cubic louse and it was absolutely thrown it down in bucket holes. And I just I was chesting them out and I just had a pair of old dirty clipping bitches on, I had nothing on the top. And just at that point this old duck come running out and did about six or eight young ones with it. And I just catched that handful of each hand and I pushed them in his pocket and he looked at me as though I was mad like <laughs> <laughs> You put the ducklings in his pocket. Aye. What, for, I, what for? Like as a present? Well, sheep would have you know, probably killed them because they're just a day too old, like, you know, and they shouldn't, they shouldn't have been there, like, you know. But oh, anyway, okay. Oh, and okay. It, <laughs> it the road, and then uh, the other ones, they were dry, like, and I'd fetch them across. Yeah. Oh, so I you got, had to protect them from the sheep. And he turned them into cubic louse, and when I started shaving them, he looked up and he was, he said, I believe now there is such men as you. Ah, <laughs> That's awesome that he came all the way from America to see you. All the way from America and the day I didn't do justice, it was absolute storming. Oh uh, no. <laughs> Come in the yard with he pushing his bike like it. I had oh. down in somewhere. A push uh, bike or a motorbike? Bike. Wow. Yeah, so Maybe say scale station probably in cycle up, I didn't ask him where he had cycled from, like, yeah. um, wow. it was quite, quite an introduction for him. Yeah, 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 the Lake District doesn't always give us beautiful sunny days, does it? Um, and I was blessed 
I just had a fat old skirt, dirty trousers on the bottom and nothing on the top. I was yeah. shaped more gracious. Yeah. Well, it's it's just real, authentic, isn't it? Yeah, it's very authentic. Yeah. Uh, I bet he was thrilled. <laughs> if you'd found you suited and booted, then that would have been a bit strange. <laughs> All right. Um, well, we've got a question now from someone um, who's a lot closer than America. Um, Steve Chilton, who's written many foul running books, including Get a, um, It's a Hill, Get Over It, and which you feature quite prominently. Um, so Steve's here, and he wants to ask you a question as well. Um, he wants to ask about the Joss Naylor Challenge, uh, because it's for the over 50s only, isn't it? And he wants to know how did that come about? Oh, he probably knows. He's just he wants you to tell everyone. <laughs> the over fifty challenge. It was Peter and I, and Peter was looking at a map one night when I went into work at BNFL, and he said, "Josh, said, I've got a good thing here for you to do." And he, I said, "Where's that start from?" And he said, "Poly Bridge." So he read out, you know, the route, and that's the following two two nights. I, I ran it, you know, just from Pearly Bridge to the top of Dunmail, and then the following night I ran the other way in Ken Ledwood. It was a, but the first night I ran it with my son-in-law at the time, Colin Dulson, and uh, it was just a, a good, good, good thing to do. And uh, you know, we got sort of found out how long it was going to take, more or less, and uh, we decided it was just a nice thing. And then we decided we'd do it for the all the people. You know, the over 50s, but that come along rather later, you know, later on, because, you know, Chris Brasher thought it'd be a nice thing to have a thing, like, you know, some similar to the Bob Graham for the older runners to aim for. And uh, we decided the times, because I ran it one morning, and Peter and another of my friends came out to make us a desk type, and that day, was the most disgusting day you could ever be out in the film. Oh no, not another one. <laughs> Peter went down with hypothermia just after the stretch of Oh no. Oh no. Uh, disgusting. Yeah. And the other pacer, he, we left him at Beckhead. He was going to go around the backside of Kirk Fell and meet him on Black Sail. And when we catch up to him, he was shaking like a leaf. Oh God. But it's just, you know, send them in. And anyways, we had these fishermen's sort of gowns on, and they come down to their ankles. And, you know, they were that real thick, heavy material, you know, what fishermen wear. Mm. And they go and that's caught on the Icelandic trawlers. <laughs> uh, when we come to the end of what they call the wall end on the sports, Colin had to stop and put another cag underneath. He couldn't maintain body weight. Mm. It's Peter and John that ate now the food we were going to eat. <laughs> so I ran that on one biscuit from Holy <laughs> Bridge to Grendel Bridge. On one uh, biscuit? Oh no! Uh, was it a uh, good biscuit? It must have been a good biscuit, I. <laughs> a really big one. <laughs> uh, that was a Turkson. And we got <laughs> one meal. And Collins went and had a bit of cake and a cup of tea and I said, I'll just carry on trotting and to catch up to it. Aye, and they said, we were going to feed us an S pipe. And we got the top S pipe. And they said, we would have no more need than the food than what you were. So they ate it. They ate it. Oh my yeah. goodness. Oh, I, I'm surprised you're still friends. <laughs> I would not have been happy with that. <laughs> we set off at was there there and it was quite a decent morning, really. So John and I took some clothes with us, took spare clothes and everything, and spare food. And by the time we got to stay, it was just it was just lashing it down. It was it, the, the, the the paths were just rivers. And we, as it just right, it says there we went made up the escorts to where we were going to meet them, coming off S Pike. And you couldn't see in front of you, you could hardly stand up. You, you, you were standing out in rain, you just you were just drenched. And yeah, it was right. We went over great then, we dropped down again. I made a great gable and I said, That's it there, I'm gonna to have to go in. I said, I just can't keep going. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You've got to know what you're doing, haven't you, in, in that kind of, in that kind of environment. Um 
yeah oh, well there's a lot of respect for you Joss um, and all of your friends obviously um, on the live chat still so we've got um, Antonio Cardinelli he says hello to Joss Naylor the great and to all um, so yeah lots we've got lots of fans Joss um, Denise Park says hi she says she was with you last Friday and she says you were in on excellent form um, and she says you'll have a lots of interesting answers for us here tonight and she's put a nice photo of you and her um, up on her comment as well um, so I've just shown that to everybody Jim Grant is a big fan he found out about this chat and he said ah this is the best news Claire he is the finest on our fells for sure so lots of love there from Jim Grant um, then we've got um, Ned's housing co-op he says great to hear from Joss the ultimate Lakeland fell runner without a doubt um, and then we've got oh we've got some more questions here um, we've got John Pollard who says does Joss's son race or run because there's a Joss Naylor vet 60 who's entered in the Duddon Valley race this Saturday it's not my son, no. I've asked, been asked this a few times. It could be just Naylor. Do they not have a Vet 80 category? No. no. They don't? Oh, they should have one because then you'd win all the time. <laughs> well, that's, that's probably true, Claire. You would probably win all the time. Yeah. But no, I think we have a Vet 70, but we don't have a Vet 80. Yeah. So, how uh, do you mind me asking how old you are at this moment in time, Joss? 85. Fantastic. And you're still going strong? I wouldn't call it strong, but I'm still going. <laughs> <laughs> An excellent answer there. Um, I wanted to ask you the secret to running um, uh, at such um, an, uh, well, how, what should we call it, a, a wise old age. Um, Arlene M has beaten me to it though. She says she's only 62 and she's wondering what the secret, secrets are to running um, until you're 80 basically so um yeah what is your secret joss is it a pint of guinness every evening the pint of guinness helps <laughs> <laughs> but uh you've got to have a lot of luck really you know because anybody who's had a lifetime some of the joints will go at some point uh you know i was very unlucky really my knee went when i was uh just about 17 18 19 52 you know and uh, it's something you've got to live with, really. If you get uh, injuries, and you yeah. know, to, to go through a lifetime and the way I have nothing that's really stopped me. I've been very, very lucky. You know. I, and I can uh, see in one of these pictures you're using um, tre like hiking poles, um, like on the arm and things. Um, is that for your knee? Uh, it keeps the weight off the knee. You know, it. Uh, between me and you, it's knackered. So that helps. <laughs> It'll give it another 10 years, I reckon. Another 10 <laughs> years? Wow. I, I was going to give it 15. I think that 100 should be a good aim for you there. Once you, keep, once you get Josh going with his sticks and his stride and he gets his breath properly, he just goes on and he just in it. To, we, we, we found this on Sunday when we did the on light, but James who came with us, he said, I can't believe how fast he can walk. For his age, it's fair enough. But he, once you get him going, that's it, it's just, it's just keep him going. And I, and I think it, it's a case of how he's just keep going at 85, but he just keeps going, he just goes, goes out and enjoys himself, sees a few friends, goes out with different people, and just generally enjoys his life. Yeah, so there's no special secret, but just luck. That's what you're saying there. Yeah. You yeah. made it. Yeah. All right. Uh, you've got to be born with it, though. You know, I was probably the old lad who said he operated on this. You know, I was at about chance of the uh, in about 150,000 uh, more than a million. You know, there'd be one person with no bone structure in the big heart. Yeah. So you've got both of those. Um, and so there's some questions coming in now about some advice for people, um, not on getting old and running, but just running in general. So ACOG says, hi Joss, I've just started Munro's, uh, running Munro's in Scotland. Any advice to a newcomer to the sport of hill running? 
on trail running, you, you must learn to climb. You know, put plenty of climbing in your legs and just steady away before you put all the pressure on. If you put too much pressure on them, on a bit of steep ground too soon, you've got to set on this small stride and just work in and gradually lengthen your stride till you get to the point where you are shifting over the ground uphill without butching your energy and putting too much pressure on your legs. Once you get into a stride where you feel comfortable, keep 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 it running. Because once you start walking going up hill, you'll continue walking. But you've got to learn that bit of running and keep your running together going up hill. Yeah. And once you that, get away with it. Yeah, so the uphill running is something that everybody needs to work on. And you know, when you're running naturally on the better going, run as relaxed as possible, keep the tension out of your body and try not to burn a lot of energy up for nothing. Mm -hmm. Go a long way on the little. Yeah, so just like ping along. All right. Yeah, that's excellent advice. Thank you very much for that. And um, we, we also have um, a, a non-beginner advice question. So Mick um, Suville, um, he says, uh, has just got like three or so training tips for being a really good fell runner. Uh, for being a really good fell runner, you know, you've got to get a lot of strength in your body and, you know, to be an all-round man, you know, because a lot of these fell run races now, especially the longer ones, you know, where you're going to be out for five hours, you've got to have your body strong and you've got to be able to put long training runs in, come back, you know, have a scrub down and go out and work and do things like that. That's what I used to do. I used to come home and up my long training runs. I would scrub down in back as I was coming through, dry off, get some food in them and get out and I would just work as though I had been nowhere. And that's the only way to get the body strong is to put the running into it and the work after it. Yeah, and did you follow any sort of special diet or anything like that um, to make you stronger? I just ate all the rubbish, a lot of sweet stuff, <laughs> and bars and, but you know, like when I did the cross in there, I don't eat on, the, on one biscuit, but say that was the way we were brought up. You know, you'd be gathered in shape and be out down at Gillithwaite from Middle Row, you know, which is about 10 to 12 miles away, and you'd be setting up about half past seven in the morning and maybe five or six o'clock at night and you'd march all day off nothing. Really? You'd just have a little stream now and again. You weren't given the pack of sandwiches you used to have a picnic when you're out gathering the sheep. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, uh, you know. That sounds like hard work. So did you just have to eat a lot in the morning, like a big breakfast, and then like a lot when you got home for tea? I got, I got a taste of porridge and a bit of old fat bacon and made a sandwich out of it. The, the villagers had all the good bacon and that sort of stuff. Yeah. In the war time, and just after we, you know, we just, uh, I don't say we ate scraps, we lived, you know, reasonably well, like, but the villagers, they got the, the ham and the shoulders and they got the old bit of fat that went between. It. Yeah. And of course, there was no energy gels and energy bars and all this kind of thing back then, was there? Not an energy gel yet. You haven't had one? No. Uh, no. Well, a Mars bar is pretty much an energy gel, isn't it? Oh, sorry, say that again. I've got all that to come. <laughs> you could have had one on the arm uh, the other weekend. That would help, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Think how fast you'd go if you had an energy gel, huh? <laughs> um, well, I'm just a plodder now. No, I, I... <laughs> Well, uh, we think you're doing brilliantly. Look, John Pollard says, by the way, no way is Joss 85. He must be having us on. <laughs> I wish I was. <laughs> <laughs> well, your brain is definitely not 85 because you can remember every single thing. Um, <laughs> so much more than a lot of 85-year-olds that can't even remember the, what day of the week it is. Um, 
So we've got uh, Kyle Michael who wants to know a bit more about the Wainwrights, 214 Peaks in Seven Days. Um, he read your little book about it um, and he think, he says, do you think that the Wainwrights could gain as much notoriety as the Bob Graham Round over time or would it be too hard for most folk? It would be definitely too hard for most people, you know, because the average person who's gone from work, you know, six or seven days, is going to take longer, and he's going to have to have breaks to do it, you know. These people who are doing it in, you know, record time now, they've put a lot of work, a lot of groundwork in, you know, to get to where they are. And the ordinary layman can't just put his packed lunch up and go and say, right, I'm going to do the Wayne rights. He's got to work hard at it, you know. The shortcuts don't get you anywhere on something like that. Your, your body packs in, but, you know, before it gets rounded. Yeah. So it, he's, got do his own work. he's got to do his training, and he's got to sort his data sheet out. And yeah, it's a big undertaking, isn't it? The it's on the days he does it. Yeah. And we've got a nice picture here of you with Paul Tierney, um, who holds the current record for the Wainwrights. Um, and he, he's um, he's stroking a couple of dogs. Are they your dogs? Or no, his, no. Or his? The, the, well, I think that he's uh, his, his wife to be's dogs. Because yeah. when it's the dogs. Sarah McCormack. Yes, they don't take a lot of notice. <laughs> And it's good ladies out with the dogs. <laughs> yeah. It's good mannered dogs. Ah. And they do. But one word from Paul and they do as they like. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> it was quite amusing, I. But I tell you what, the lovely, the lovely dogs. And I think Paul's just rather too soft. <laughs> and, <it's> like, <laughs> and the dogs know. Yeah. Yeah, dogs can tell that kind of thing, isn't it? Because you're you're a great fan of dogs, aren't you? Have you got a dog at the moment? I haven't. No, no. It's you know, it's sort of the first time in my life I've not really had a dog, mm. and I do I miss my dog like I. Uh, yeah. But you know, it's in fair on the dog. I have a dog where I'm at now. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. But you've had many good dogs over the years, haven't you? Some favourite dogs and like really good workers. I, I've been lucky. I had a lot of good dogs. I've had one or two that weren't good dogs, but. You know, every time they had a day or two on the fell, they started to take notice and do as they were told. There's nothing like tiding them out and then they take, take notice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's hard to train a dog. Um, but yeah, it, it's vital, isn't it, in um, in what you were doing um, being a shepherd. So you must have had a lot of good experiences out on the fells with them. Um, but just going back to the Wainwrights for a moment, if we can, um, Steve Chilton wants to know, um, he says you were the second person to do all the Wainwrights in one go in 1986. Um, he wants you to tell everyone how did you plan the route for that? To be quite honest, I didn't. <laughs> I, I just more or less set off, you know, and the team I was going to start with was uh, Colin Dawson and uh, what do call it? Andy, Andy, Andy. and Andy Lagema, they were going to do all the pacing between them. And uh, anyways, the first day was really hot, and uh, Colin, I think he burst a blood vessel in his one of his lungs. Oh my! Ended up in hospital. Well, it's a very serious thing, like you know, mm. and Andy. It was so hot, and they had to, you know, give up before they got through the first day. And Ken Ledwood was running about getting patients for it. Mm. It's all down to Ken Ledwood, really, that he took the patients from. But uh, I know the words the hen, uh, Dave Hall, he came up from London, and he spent about four days with his day. He was an absolute great bloke, like, you know. Oh, oh, they've been doing it a few years before, haven't they? Mm. Uh, and so, so there, there was a route, I uh, would think, before one of the Blunts. Uh, Chris Blunt, Chris Blunt had done it as well. Yeah, uh, Chris Blunt, uh, you know, I'd done various versions of it. Mm. Uh, so yeah. There was a route there which just sort of followed. 
and then as you, as you rightly said to just know a different line through maybe some of the fells and the different where to get to the different tops yeah so there was there was a knowing where they were going yeah 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 there was a vague route but yeah because i know that um when i've spoken to steve birkinshaw who broke the record the first he was the first person after you to break that record he said that he put it down to his different route more than his actual um running he says joss was probably the better athlete than me but i just did like he did a lot of like calculations didn't he put it all in a spreadsheet because he's very much a spreadsheet person and he got all everything and he did a slightly different route and he said he was able to shave the time off because of that um and then obviously paul tierney then just um followed that and was a bit faster as well um well, there, was, there was a person who just used to only talk eric robert who, who had a conversation with a guy down in liverpool so i've got all this in Josh's collection as well uh, uh, and this guy down in liverpool i think he maybe worked for the orient survey people and he was getting maps out and, and, and plotting route, different routes and different ways doing them as well as for the rain race, for the uh, the 24 hour record as well, he did, all, he did a bit of work on them, but especially on the rain race. So they took basic Alan Heaton's and Chris's routes and they just kept modifying it and modifying it. But you've got to remember in them days, it was before apps on your phone when you could <laughs> Strava or yeah. app on your phone. Like it was just a matter of getting the map out, wouldn't it? And just going, yeah. short, good, good. And yeah. then just having footage and thinking, yeah, that is a short day. But yeah and you can't yeah. even tell from the map either can you what the terrain's going to be like so you could it could be shorter but not great to run over yeah but it is i do think it's really interesting how um just recently because you held the pennine way um fastest time as well um as the wainwrights and just recently there's been a real resurgence of of these like taking things away from the Bob Graham round which was like 2018 like it was all about the Bob Graham round Killian blah 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 um so it, how how do you feel Joss when people break these long-standing records of yours does it feel like are you disappointed or are you just like yep yeah, shake that man woman whoever it is by the hand no I think I think it's fantastic to do it really you know we've got I know what, what went into my uh benign way you know I'd I did a bit. I had a little bit of a training session before it, and I was running well. And the first day I set off off the Chiviet, I was coming in at a hell of a rate of knots, and my uh, left leg went in right up to my thigh, and it didn't come out. Oh. Next morning it was black and blue, and it was a main leg like the other leg just goes for a ride, you know. <laughs> Anyways, from the first hundred mile. I ran in, you know, just a, fairly relaxed and I was, you know, going well. And we stopped at Duffin for the night. I got up next morning and I couldn't hardly walk. And I just had to hitch down to uh, Kirkett and uh, oh, down the finish. Yeah. And uh, I would have finished well under three days. Yeah. But uh, my pace had went for fish and chips and had two pints with me just the same time. Really? Oh no, gutted. <laughs> so near and yet so far. <laughs> it's an awful long way that road though, after all that way, isn't it? It's, it's only like a few miles, isn't it? But it must feel like eternity. Look, you know, then, then the uh, two hard days like this, I couldn't couldn't side out at all, you know. And then the Achilles tendons both went. and. Uh, it's rather painful. Yeah. So, so those people. Uh, but the people who do it now, you know, the, the, there's some really good distance runners. Yeah. But I tell you what, when if they don't, uh, if they try and get under three days, you know, they come in and they can tell they've run it. Yeah, yeah. So have you been following yeah. like Sabrina Vergi and uh, Damien Hall and John Kelly um, on all their attempts? Uh, like I know John, uh, we're going to go down the same end, but this something happened I couldn't get. And A was going to be well under, the, you know, the record. Yeah. It was about five or six hours up and going like a steam engine. But when he finished, he had steam coming out of his ears. It was... his last legs. It was on his last legs, fellow fellow. But, you know, fantastic run. But, you know, that he hadn't a lot of steam left in him. <laughs> yeah, well, as it should be if he left it all on the course, hey? 
that's the way it, that's the way it is the record which is what it's got to be yeah fantastic and so we've just got a question here from philip haddock and he says what are joss's thoughts on the popularity of fell running over the years ah uh, well it's doing the best now it's probably ever done you know since the shutdown and of course there's been a lot of people you know done some fantastic times on many many things you know and they've had more time to think about it more time to prepare for it and there's more people coming into fell running into this trail running. They, you know, it's got an awful lot of people out. Because going back about 10, 15 years ago, the numbers for it right to the end of the and the Wasdale, and you know, one or two of those longer races, they were just going to nearly have to close the races down. And then they've got the resurgence now, where we're getting the numbers, and the sports going the right way, you know, which is absolutely marvellous. Brilliant. And um, Anna, we've got a fun question here from Joe Faulkner, who um, I know very well. Hi, Joe, if you're still watching, so we're going to ask your question now. It's um, uh, um, Joss, he wants to know, do you want Guinness, um, red wine or a pint from the Strand? And is the Strand the pub in Wasdale? Yeah, Wasdale, yeah. Hi, Wasdale. That's good. Yeah, so do you want, would you order a Guinness, a red wine, or a pint? I suppose it depends what you've been doing. Aye, I usually, usually have a pint of Guinness any time we go, go in the wash water. Yeah. Aye. We'd one the other one, I like. Yeah. yeah. What is it that you like Aye. about Guinness? Because it's quite thick, isn't Aye. it? Like, I'm, I'm not a massive fan of it. What do you like about it? Well, it saved my life when I was four year old, Guinness. Oh, and yeah. And tonsils. And in them days, they, they were very rough taking the tonsils out. In fact, I can still feel them taking it out. Oh. They did a scoop thing, and they just push it in your throat. And I couldn't eat for about five or six weeks. And I was only about four years old. And my mother fed us on cream and Guinness. And, uh, you know, that's, that's why I'm so big and strong, like. <laughs> Oh, that's really sweet. I might try that with my son when he's four to see if he likes cream and Guinness. <laughs> um, and John Pollard, um, he's the one who asked about whether your son was running at Dudden Valley. Um, he says, great podcast. Um, now I know I'm going to be running alongside the great man on Saturday as I'm doing Dudden Valley Race 2. It will be an honour and a privilege to do that and to meet Joss in person. So look out for John at the Dudden Valley Race. I will. I make him very, very welcome. Ah, oh, brilliant. Um, and so before we, um, before. Oh, sorry. Say that again. I talked over you. We'll have a pound of Guinness together at the finish. Brilliant. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, oh, yeah, he can buy you a pint, can't he? Um, so just before we go tonight i just really want to talk um about the next project that you're working on now um it's it's kind of hush hush kind of secret um but we're we're gonna talk we can talk a little bit about it on here can't we um because you're writing a book um that's going to be out in october um can you tell me a bit more about what it's about and um yeah anything that you're able to share basically well it's uh on the lakes, mares and waters, and that day was probably one of the nicest days I ever had in the lake district. I visited all the lakes, mares, waters, on a nice sunny day. I know it was a little bit of drizzle when we came into Keswick at night, but we had a most beautiful day ever, and we saw all the lake district, and we visited all the lakes, mares and waters. And it was just a privilege to be there, you know. I never had a bad patch, I never had any cramp. I had a lot of decent, good people out with us, and it was just what fell in was all about. Just oh. 
that sounds fantastic um, and if everybody's watching live if you want a message to say a message to Joss before we go then type it now um, because I'm just gonna say to everybody what the Lakes Mears and Waters is that this was a, a record that you um, you undertook in 1983 um, is that right and it's 105 miles and you did it in 19 hours and 20 minutes so do you think that when people have read this book that that might make a sort of a resurgence in um, in going for that record do you reckon I think so uh, there's more more interest this last two or three years there's one or two others done it uh, the one I did I just can't mail it if you know and uh, it isn't on the original route oh. yeah, I went to Kent Mayor twice where right? other runners just go through and do Kent Mayor and go up Long Sledge mm -hmm. so yeah, I went up back up Kent Mayor to Kent Mayor Water or Kent Mayor whatever it is yeah it's, it's a lovely I don't spot know how they call a valley Kent Mayor and it's got a it might be man, man made but it looks as much a quarter as any others. Yeah. Do you, do you know roughly how many there are of these lakes, mirrors and waters? Uh, there. 27. 27 of them. Oh, brilliant. And so do you like have a, a, a little bit of a swim in any of them? Like to like, you know, get the legs going again? Give it a good shake round and put my thumb up. Yeah. So, so, so the, the book, the book's going to be the story of just running in 1983 interactive into space with some of the stories in running different like the Dutton Valley race, maybe a story about that or a mountain trail when it's in a certain area. Plus a little bit of the um, maybe some of like the history of the area is gonna run through, maybe some of like the woods, maybe you know, different things in different places. Plus super photos, you know, we've got some really good photos coming. It's not from it's some from nineteen eighty three and some obviously from now. But it should show the lake district off at its best because mm. it's just right to say it's going to go right through the lake district every valley you're going to jump over in your valley you're going to go to places like Skeggles water which people don't go to mm. or you go water which people don't go to mm -hmm. and, and, and a bit out of the way places as well you know over water another one springs to mind no one really goes over water it's, it's a bit of an oddity but it's a nice place when you get there mm. I really yes. like the idea of it being the bodies of water as well because everybody's all about all oh, the way rights tick off all the peaks it's all the mountains 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 but the lake district is called the lake district for a reason isn't it so i think that's much more of a doable thing is to tick off 27 lakes isn't it or maybe have a dip in each of them like because it's a hundred miles you wouldn't like you wouldn't get everybody doing it all in one day necessarily so maybe it could be a good like long weekend project for people or a week-long holiday project it sounds really great yeah that's you you've signed up for it now <laughs> yeah i know i'm like oh great that's my next film <laughs> off i go my next week-long holiday will be doing the lakes mirrors and waters and yeah we're, so if if you hear word that somebody's going to do it would you be there to shake their hand at the end is it is it something that's close to your heart in that way be a nice thing to do if, if, if the pick us up i'll be there definitely yeah uh, just come through uh, Comes by a, by a down from uh, down the Greendale, it comes down the Greendale Bridge as well. So it's just right to say if you know the schedule, you can meet people at Greendale Bridge and push them on the way and then meet them at the end. Eh? Brilliant. Oh, that would be nice. You could hand them a Mars bar and a pint of Guinness, couldn't you, Joss? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and just one final question, just before I read you out some lovely things that everybody's been saying to you. I'll just read a few of them because there's loads of them. Um, what What is your favourite thing about fell running? What makes it such a, a brilliant sport? Why do you like it so much? And why are you still getting out there on the fells? It's, it's that the camaraderie ship in fell running that exists in no other sport. The finest people on this earth the fell runners and I've been very privileged to be part of it and we're privileged to have you um, you've got an MBE haven't you um, uh, for your services to the sport so I think that's very very well deserved and it's brilliant because you're you also donating the profits from this book to the Braithe Trust as well did you just want to yeah. mention what that is I think most of our runs we've ever done is you know been for 
a deserving charity. And I think in this day and age, there's so many deprived, you know, young people who have probably gone wrong in their lives, probably through no fault of their own. And it really gives them a great opportunity in life to turn their lives around. And over 70% of the children who go to Brady never offend again and it makes them into good human beings and I think it's a fantastic place. And there's a lot of people don't know Brady exists, which is awfully, awfully sad. Uh, yeah, so it's a, a local place, it's a big house isn't it, and they go there and they do outdoor activities. It overlooks Windermere. Yeah. It's so, a beautiful place. Yeah, right. which is one of the 27 meres. So they could start there doing the Lakes, Mears and Waters. Yeah. You've got it in one. <laughs> awesome. That's brilliant. Oh, I've really enjoyed chatting to you tonight, Joss, and you as well, Toddy. It's been a real pleasure. I just want to read out some nice comments. So we've got um, Andrew Simpson says, good on you, Joss. You look like you've got another 85 years in front of you too. Uh, we've got Arlene M who says thank you for the inspiration. Um, ACOG says thank you for answering my questions sir. Looking forward to reading the book. So you've got at least one sale from doing this. And then Kyle Michael said um, today should be a rest day but now I feel a hill calling me. Thanks for the podcast guys. Stay safe all. Um, and Steve Chilton finally says um, good to see you looking so well Joss. All the best. Thanks Dave. Thank you very much to everyone. Good luck to them. Thanks, Joss and Toddy. It's been a real pleasure chatting to you. So I'll let you go on with your evening now um, and hope to see you one day on the fells if I ever do the lakes, mirrors and waters. Good luck with the book. I hope so. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, see you, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Bye.